Okay, so we're going to continue on with some problems. So problem number two, it's a bar graph. And it pretty much is just asking, it says that this bar graph shows the number of customers who shopped at a store Monday through Thursday. It says if the numbers of customers on Friday was one fifth increase, increase means you're adding from the number of customers on Thursday, how many customers shopped at the store on Friday? So one fifth just means that you're dividing the number by five. So let's go ahead and see how many customers customers we had on Thursday. So we're at the one, two, three, four line. So that means we had 400 customers on Thursday. So one fifth of 400 would be 400 divided by five, which is equal to 80. So that means on Friday, they had 80 more students that are shopping in the store on Friday. So we would just take the 400 students from Thursday, we're gonna add 80 and we'll have 480 who would be shopping at the store on Friday. So our answer would be A. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next problem. So it's a different type of gra graph. This is called a dot plot. And it's very simple. You see on the plot or on the graph, you see that there are dots. Each one of those dots just represents the total amount of people that were either surveyed or um, the total amount of people that were used in order to make this graph. So when you read the question, it says that the dot plot above identifies the number of pets living with each of 20 families in an apartment building. So the total number of families that were um, surveyed were 20, so there should be 20 dots on that dot plot. So it's asking what fraction of the families have more than two pets? So we're gonna go, this is how many families had two pets. This is how many families had more than two pets. The families that have three pets and the families that have four pets. So there's three here and there's one there. So there's a total of four families that have more than two pets in their family. So again, they're asking us for a fraction. So when we have a fraction on the bottom, the denominator is gonna be the total. So we already know the total. The total is gonna be 20. We just found out how many families have more than two pets, which is four. So it would be four out of 20. If you look at your answer choices though, you don't see that as an answer. You don't see four over 20. Why? Because anytime you have an answer that's a fraction, the answer is always going to be simplified. You're not gonna see that answer unless it's already simplified. So how do we simplify this fraction? It's very simple. You just find a number that can be divided by the, a number that can go into the numerator and a number that can go into the denominator. So I look at the number four and the number 20 and I know that I can divide both of those numbers by four. So I'm gonna divide the numerator and the denominator by four. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 20 divided by 4 is 5. So 4 over 20 reduced is 1 over 5. And I see that the answer is B. If simplifying fractions is difficult for you and you weren't easily able to see that 4 and 20 can both be div divided by the number 4, the trick that I want to teach you is that if you see that the numerator and the denominator are both even numbers, just divide them by 2. So divide the top and the bottom number by two because they're both even. Four divided by two is two. 20 divided by two is 10. If both of those numbers are still even after you've divided them by two, divide by two again. So we're gonna divide the top and the bottom number by two. Two divided by two is one. 10 divided by two is five. And we're left with one over five again. So you can either do it the simple way, just know that the largest number that you can divide the top and the number by is by four, or you can do it the other way where if both the numerator and denominator are even numbers, just keep dividing by two until either both or one of the other number is an odd number. So the answer is one over five. We're gonna go on to question number eight. And now this question is gonna take us some more time. So please be patient with yourself because I know a lot of students are gonna struggle with understanding this question. So please hang in there while I explain this to you guys. Please don't give up. So it says, Richard bought three slices of cheese pizza and two sodas for $8.75. So I already see that we're talking about pizza and we're talking about sodas. So I'm gonna write pizza over here 
and I'm going to label it with the letter P. And we're talking about sodas as well. And I'm going to label that with an S. Pizza and sodas. So three slices of pizza. So I'm going to write 3P. And so I know it's an addition and two sodas. So 2S. And it's four, which is equal to 875. Very simple. Now I'm going to read my next sentence. Then it says Jordan bought two slices of pizza. So two slices of pizza. And again, that's an addition symbol and four sodas. So four S for eight dollars and fifty cents. So equals eight dollars and fifty cents. Very simple to make those statements. All right. So they're pretty much going to ask us to figure out how much the pizzas are, how much the sodas are in order to say what answer it is to the last question. We just got to figure out how much is a pizza piece. <laughs> how much is a piece of pizza and how much is a can of soda? So we have two equations and they have two different variables. We're used to just seeing one variable in the equation and, know, and knowing exactly what to do. When we have two equations that have two variables in them, we know that we're solving a system of equations. All that means is you're trying to figure out what one variable is equal to, and then you gotta try and find out what the other variable is equal to. So we're gonna solve this system of equations through elimination. Elimination just means we're gonna get rid of something. So I'm gonna look at both of these equations and I'm gonna say, is there any way to make this first equation have something that's the same in this second equation? So I'm gonna look and say, okay, I can't make a three into two. That's impossible. I can't multiply three times a number that equals two. That'd be crazy. But I'm looking at two to four. If I wanna make this two into a four, I can multiply two times two equals four. So I have a plan. I am gonna multiply this entire first equation by the number two. Every piece in that equation I'm multiplying by two. So three P times two is 6p, 2s times 2 is 4s, and 875 times 2 is 1750. All right, so now I have this equation and I made it brand new into that equation. So I'm going to just rewrite that second equation underneath it. 2p plus 4s equals 850. Now what I can do is eliminate by subtracting the second equation from the first equation. So I'm gonna subtract. 6P minus 2P is 4P. 4S minus 4S, those would be cancel each other, canceled out, they would cancel each other out. And then I would have 1750 minus 850, which would be equal to nine. Now look, we eliminated the S's so now we just have one variable that we can go ahead and solve for. We want to solve for P by getting the P alone. We're going to look and say, okay, what's causing this P to not be by itself? It's the four. How do I get rid of that four? Well, I have to figure out what's happening with the four now. Right now, the four is being multiplied by the P. That's why they're squished together like that. So if right now they're being multiplied, I have to do the opposite of multiplication, which is dividing. So I'm gonna divide both sides by four. So four divided by four, those fours cancel out, you're just left with P. And then nine divided by four, I'm gonna put that in my calculator and I'm gonna have 2.25. And look at that, P, which stood for pizza, is equal to 225. So a slice of pizza is equal to $2.25. We have one of our variables solved. We know how much the pizza costs. So now what we do is, we're just gonna go back to this original equation. We're now gonna plug in the value of pizza and we're gonna figure out how much do sodas cost. So I'm probably gonna have to start here. So I'm gonna do 3P plus 2S equals 875. And now instead of writing P, I know the value of P. I'm gonna just put in 225 plus 2S equals $8.75. And so I'm just gonna plug it into my calculator. Three times 2.25 is 6.75 plus 2S equals 875. Now I only have one variable to solve for. 
So I know that the variable is s. I have to get the s by itself. In order to get the s by itself, I got to get rid of the 675. Then I have to get rid of the 2. So in order to get rid of the 675, I have to ask myself again, what is happening with the 675? The 675 is being added. So I have to subtract 675 from both sides in order to get rid of it. So then I'd be left with 2s is equal to $2. Now, again, it's 2s equals $2. I have to get rid of that 2. What is happening with the 2 right now? It's being multiplied. That's why the 2 and the s are squished together. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And now I know that sodas equal a dollar. Look at that. I now know the price of pizza, and I now know the price of sodas. So let's go back to the question to see what they're asking. They're asking how much would an order of one slice of cheese pizza and three sodas cost? So we do 225 times one, which is just equal to 225 plus three sodas, which would be three times $1, which is $3. We're gonna add those two values together and we're gonna get $5.25. So our answer is going to be B. Again, it was complicated. It was a lot of steps, but just try to slow down when you're taking the test. There's no reason to rush through this. When you take your time and just do it one line at a time, it's much simpler. Just do one line at a time. If you guys have any questions, please reach out to me. You guys have my email below, but we're going to go ahead and move on to the next question. So we have if 5C, we have 5C minus 2 is equal to 3C, then what is 24C? Okay, so in this situation, we do have two variables, C and C. But the good news about this and what makes this different from the last question is that instead of having two different variables or two different letters, these two variables are the same letter. So all that means is that I have to get the variables on one side and I have to get the numbers on the other side. So what I'm going to do to make this very simple is I'm going to add two to both sides. I'm going to move the numbers to the right side. So 5C the twos cancel each other out, is equal to 3c plus 2. All right, so because I move the numbers to the right, that means I have to move the variables to the left. So I'm going to move 3c to the other side. Right now, that's a positive 3c. So in order to get rid of it, I'm going to subtract 3c from both sides. So 5C minus 3C is 2C. Bring down the equal sign is equal to 2. Now I just have the variable on one side and have number on the other side. So let's go ahead and solve for this variable. I know you're probably like, oh, Miss Amber, I know what, what's going on. We got to figure out what's happening with that 2 right now. Right now that 2 is being multiplied by the C. So in order to get rid of the C, we have to divide both sides by 2. So we're going to divide both sides by 2 and we're gonna get C is equal to one. Perfect, but one isn't an answer because they weren't asking what C was equal to. They're asking what 24 C is equal to. So we're just gonna plug in, instead of writing C, we're gonna write one. Remember when those two values are squished together, they're being multiplied. So all you have to do is 24 times one, which is equal to 24, and so our answer would be D not as complicated as they try to make it seem. Do you guys have energy for just one more problem? Okay, so this last one has to do with how much do you understand, how much do you remember about graphing? Once you understand a little bit about graphing, then these types of problems, no problem. So it's saying in the xy plane, that's unnecessary, literally just strike that first part out of your brain. The slope of the line, is y equals mx minus 4. So the slope of the line y equals mx minus 4 is less than the slope of y equals x minus 4. What in the world are they talking about? All they're saying is when you have a line and you write it in slope intercept form, it's y equals mx plus b. The m is usually just a number that represents the slope. 
it's usually just a number to represent the slope. Sometimes you'll see y equals 2x plus b, and you know that the slope is 2 of that line. Sometimes it's y equals 1 half x plus b, and you'll see that the slope is 1 half of that line. Whatever number that comes before the x is considered the slope. So I'm going to erase that so that it's not overwhelming to you. But with that information in mind, it's saying the slope of this line, y equals mx minus 4. So before we move on, they don't tell us what the slope is. We don't know what the slope is for that line. But they're telling us that it's less than the slope for this line. So let's write that equation out. y equals x minus 4. So what is the slope of this line? Well, we just discussed that the slope is whatever number that's written before the x. There is no number written before the x. Anytime you have a variable written by itself, x, y, z, b, there's always an invisible one in front of it. One, 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 one. So although there is no number written before this x, is there's always an invisible one that you can write in. So because we can fill in that blank space with an invisible one, which is now visible, you guys are not going crazy, we can all see it now, we know the slope of this second line is one. Okay, so they're saying the slope of this line, which we do not know, is less than the slope of this line, which is one. So. They want us to know which of the following must be true about m, meaning this m in this equation or that slope. m has to be equal to negative 1. Well, let's take this for example. If the slope of the second line is 1 and the slope of this line is less than 1, then the slope can be 0. It could be negative 1. It could be negative 2. It could be negative 3. It could be any of those numbers. So it doesn't have to necessarily only be negative 1. So no, it could be negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Okay, what about b? m is equal to 1. No, m has to be less than 1. So b is incorrect. What about d, which says m is greater than 1? No, it says less than 1. So it can't be d. So it must be c. m is less than 1. m, or the slope of the first line, is less than 1, which is the slope of this line. So... We made it through all the problems, you guys. Please, if you made it to the end, please tell me, Miss Amber, I made it just so that I know that I'm reaching someone and helping someone. I hope that my explanation today helped you guys in some way. It was a lot of talking, I understand. If you have any questions, please let me know and a new video will be up very shortly for the next few problems on this test. I hope you guys do well and have a great rest of your day.